Do you mind your voice being heard and then us focus on the image? Can you explain what it is? How about that? This is our high volume, high capacity bubbler. So you've converted a water filter. Water filter. Now what's this thing here this then? This has been threaded. There's a, uh, uh, this is a check valve. So if you do have an explosion in here, it doesn't push the water down up into the tube and back into the uh, chamber. I just took one that is adjustable and uh, adjusted it so that it takes very little pressure to open it. There's an adjustment screw on it. Where do you get such a thing? Lowe's, Home Depot. It goes into there and it can't go through the water. And at the bottom of that tube, is that black cap on the bottom is a diffuser. Uh -huh. It's drilled full of little 16 inch holes. Okay. So it diffuses the gas flow into small bubbles that comes up. So right. There's a frame that goes on this on the bottom and to the top and connected with threaded rods used for tightening to clamp the lid on. This, that frame has not been assembled yet for this particular unit. And that just gives it strength. So, no, it, it actually holds the top on because there's a gasket in here. Okay. If you look down in here, say it's just made out of a silicone, a bead of silicone. Now, when you're referring to a cell, you're referring to each one of these plates? The slots between the plates. The slots between the plates are what a yes. cell is. Yes. See, the only plates that are actually electrically, electrically connected to the uh, conductors at the end are the end plates. Well, what happens is the conduction in each cell couples the electricity into the next cell. But there are people who are running a wire from plate to plate, skipping yes. every other plate, and you're not having to do that. I'm not doing that because that's a parallel setup. I'm doing a series setup. Now what kind of spacing and do you have between your plates? One eighth of an inch. And what are you using to space them? Oh, and you just set your plates down in there. Yeah, there, it's, there's an extra piece in here on the, each side and an extra piece in the bottom. Mm -hmm. So the, the plates are totally there's isolated. There's a chance of them, yeah. They're separated from one another. So right. if you apply liquid here, it takes a long time for it to migrate through. Uh -huh. The slots are milled three thousandths of an inch larger than the plates. Right. Which allows a little bit of fluid to pass through around. Okay. So it can still equalize. Right. You know, electricity follows the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. Because the electricity would have to flow around the end of that plate, it's less resistant for it to go through the plate. You'll see what happens when I power this up. See how low the level is in here, yeah. right? Okay, Normally, all the way across. You'll hear the bubbler start going. Hear it? Yeah. Watch the level climb. See the level coming up? See, it's leaking right here. Now the level's coming up because of bubble production? Is that the space occupied by the bubbles causes the water level to go up? And where's the gas going to? We vent the gas outside so it gets rid of the explosion hazard yeah. in the building. Now, is this all you're using as your generator? Power source, yes. So basically all you have there is a... a red drip wire with a filter cap and just going into a, uh, an outlet. This is not a resonance unit. This is just straight DC. Right. And yet, even with straight DC, you're efficiently producing gas. Yes. In excess of Faraday's law. Yes. So there's the hydrogen uh, gas uh, output. Uh, this device putting out or drawing 143 volts and 4.6 amps. Faraday's 1.6 amps per liter. I think we got six, six liters here. That's the amperage it should be requiring to generate that gas we're generating right now. 9.6. As the temperature rises, what happens? Higher output. Voltage goes down, current goes up, the unit becomes even more efficient because the resistance drops. Oh. How many liters per minute to run a typical four-cylinder engine? Right. Well, that depends upon the gas. See, standard diatomic hydrogen is para-hydrogen. Mm -hmm. Hydrogen that's produced by an electrolysis cell is 75%, typically 75%. Orthohydrogen. Right. And which is more powerful? Orthohydrogen. Okay. It decays into parahydrogen. So if you burn it quickly before it has a chance to recombine, is that the idea? Yeah. It has more output, potential output power. And so... And then monoatomic hydrogen, because see, orthohydrogen is still diatomic. Monoatomic hydrogen is individual atoms of hydrogen. Okay. When you burn monoatomic hydrogen, and monoatomic oxygen, it yields four times the amount of energy as diatomic because it takes energy to break the bonds of the molecules to break it apart to recombine it back right. into H2O. So what you're saying then is you need a, four, as, a fourth as much yes. hydrogen gas if you're using monoatomic, monoatomic. versus 
Right. By atomic so if somebody reactor. claims that you need X number of liters per minute to run an engine, and they're talking about diatomic, H2. then you need one fourth of that. I mean, according to Faraday, we we shouldn't be able to do this. Yeah. Right. But with series cells, we can. You're saying that this would run perhaps a single cylinder engine or something. Yeah. Suppose I were to right now take this out to my car mm -hmm. and hook up a uh, an inverter mm -hmm. and drive home on it. What would it do? Give you some pretty good gas mileage. <laughs> this was uh, an experimental prototype uh -huh. that we used for being able to monitor our efficiency based on the number of cells versus right. voltage applied. Uh -huh. This will take up to 16 plates. Okay. And if you notice, the sides are spring-loaded, so you can just slide more plates in. Oh yeah, what an excellent idea. Yeah, but this is something, this is a good example of how it, how it is done. Uh, pulse width modulator and three stands for the number of uh, pulse width modulator stations it has. It has three channels. Uh, produces a uh, triple waveform, allows you to adjust the frequency and pulse width independently on each channel through these six holes. Uh, you have pulse width and frequency, pulse width frequency, pulse width frequency. Um, allows you to manually tune and uh, produce a resonance reaction. How many amps does this draw at what voltage and, and what is it well, this out? Is, this is designed it where it operates on a 12 volt automotive but it has an 8, board, uh, eight volt onboard regulator and it, it keeps it stable. So zones. when you're going with resonance it doesn't matter what volts you're putting through the cell, is that it? Uh, actually it does matter. Um, the lower the voltage the more the efficiency, the less is lost through uh, waste currents that, that create IR losses uh, um, in the cell itself, you know, go to heating the electrolyte, but if you keep the voltage to the minimum that's required to uh, give your uh, potential across the cell, you're not really trying to do electrolysis, although that is a byproduct of the voltage there. What you're trying to do is you're trying to supply an abundance of electrons. The act of the electrolyte in my particular uh, system does the job of carrying those electric fields into the solution through the cell. Uh, you know, the water capacitor is not really that good of a capacitor. <laughs> yeah. uh, it has, has high leakage. Uh, but I found that the process, if you don't supply uh, electrons to it, you end up with recombination of the gases that are produced and uh, you lose efficiency. So, this, my approach was just, you know, something that I, I happened to luck upon. Okay, and so this, this unit will work on what size chamber, how many the, cells, and that sort of thing? This will work uh, direct DC drive out uh, to a booster type unit, a small booster type unit. You can take the output of this and apply it through a transformer, um, which, which you need to do anyways with a, even with a booster unit in order to get uh, resonance to use a transformer. But with uh, the use of a transformer, you can also apply the same waveform to a higher voltage, uh, what the I call a bias set. voltage, which is your DC applied voltage to the cell. The higher voltage is uh, is affected with the waveform. So what about the screw terminals? How would the hookup be made to those? Well, in this particular one, you have your, your three um, inputs, auxiliary inputs. This has extra inputs so that you can apply external signal to it from another generator source. Is that necessary? Just, no. This is this was allow uh, so you could uh, use any other type of waveforms you wanted besides what's built in on board. There's a disable control uh, which is the D, uh, ground, ground, uh, gate supply, and B plus. So you can operate this um, actually with a different voltage on the gate supply so you can say run it on a 12 volt battery system and control a 24 volt electrolyzer system um, you can go up to 100 volts with the uh, MOSFET that's in this device so if you want to go higher you'd have to change the MOSFET and change a few parts values so you can actually directly control higher voltages with it by, while it's operating off a lower. It has an uh, optocoupler that isolates the uh, the output from the input 
and so a high frequency optocoupler is good up to uh, well we've tested up to 111 kilohertz mm -hmm. so. so is this box capable of powering a small car yes and how much would a box like this cost if it was mass produced in, on the open market approximately in your estimation a couple dollars I mean, a couple there's, dollars there's, yeah so in other words there's no reason why this technology should be out of the hands of the public none. it's not cost prohibitive none. None. and then what you need besides this is a chamber which could cost maybe a hundred bucks to build mass produced or right. something the, the only reason why this system is not really good for uh, in use is that it doesn't track the resonance action or reaction. In other words, you need a computer to do that. You need to be able to, to have feedback to yeah. do that. You could build a small computer that's capable of keeping track of those functions. Which is exactly what I've done here. With the, this is the hex controller, which is the... This, this is an early generation. I actually have other generations of the PWM3. But this is the, uh, the best that I've come up with so far. And this uses a microcontroller it's an atmel at uh, at what they know, at mega uh, 48 it goes into the socket here the the processor is not installed but this has uh, a serial port coming in broken out here on the side for connecting externally to a laptop or other type of computer for programming it uh, it also has a header for if you put a blank chip in here see you can program the chip a blank chip while it's in here so not only is it the controller it's also a programming adapter um, so essentially you can you can load this thing with a blank chip put all the chips in it send it out and the end customer can program it uh, three of these inputs are safety inputs so you can turn on and off each channel independently or you can tie them all together and turn and turn them on and off you know using like a pressure switch um, but the advantage of this, <clears throat> it also has six A to D inputs along this side that you can use to monitor feedback points on your cell. So you can vary your uh, frequencies. So for every pair, there's a safety. But so this awesome little device, together with what else, equals a water car? Uh, this, um, you need a cell, of course, well, actually a, a series of cells to get the efficiency. Uh, I recommend at least seven mm -hmm. uh, cells in series, and, and that will operate off of a 12-volt system, whereas a higher number of cells, you, know, you need obviously higher voltage to operate it. Uh, and, of course, the, uh, the, the computer chip and the programming to make it operate. You'll need a feedback sensor on your throttle control to give a throttle throttle sense to and alter the prog the uh, production on mm -hmm. the fly. Yeah, but nothing else. In other words, you don't have to have an external transformer or. Oh yes, you do. Okay, you so have you do to have, have a transformer to... on all these systems. Computer power supplies contain a toroid that's this. And you're saying something like that would actually work? Something like this would in a water car work application. in a, in a uh, small, for a small uh, seven cell unit. Which would power a four cylinder, six cylinder, even eight cylinder even car? A, yeah, a smaller eight cylinder.